I am the director of a research centre called the Lee Kuan Yew Centre for Innovative Cities. It is a research centre that is based in the Singapore University of Technology and Design. There are many issues that countries and cities have to deal with. Uh, countries and cities have to keep their economy vibrant. At the same time, there are examples, many examples and cases of social issues that are happening as a result of technology. So as we look at how we deploy IoT, we have to be mindful about how we can use IoT to achieve good economic growth for everybody, but at the same time also mitigate or reduce the amount of social issues that might occur as a result of technology disruption. As a result, I mean, because we are concerned about the social impact of uh, technology transformation and disruption, what we decided to do was we launched a survey, we call it the People Plus Digital Transformation Survey, where we wanted to understand what are some of the human dimensions to tra digital transformation that we need to think about. So we analyzed people's perceptions and attitudes, for example, whether they're optimistic about technology, whether they fear the change that technology will bring, and also whether they fear job loss as a result of technology transformation. What we need to do is, I've said many times before, that it's not just what the technology is, but what the technology does. And once we talk about what the technology does, we have to answer the question, who does what using the technology? So I think we need to start with an outcome. What are we trying to do for the city? And then we work backwards from there and say, OK, is this best taken on by the government? Maybe because it's a public good? Is it best left to private individuals because that's where individual initiative, private initiative matters the most? Or is it something where we need to learn to find new ways of working together? Government, private sector, people sector. And then if we, the models are not available, then we have to work out the models as we go in terms of how we collaborate across these different sectors. The challenge is because we, in some of these areas, we're not used to working with each other yet. So we have to learn to find out and understand each other's mindsets, priorities, trade-offs, and then find a way that maybe in some cases, maybe not all our needs will be met, We'll have to learn to compromise, but in compromising, we're hopefully achieving something larger than any one of us. And so that would be the challenge going forward. I think the next big thing has been the next big thing for a while, which is really the integration and the use of AI in all aspects of IoT, from the way it may be found in the chips to all the way its applications. We're probably only beginning to see the beginning use of uh, AI in a major way. And we're going to have to see a lot more and wait a few more years before we see, uh, before it scales up and grows to a larger extent. So for us, we in the university, because we're trying to understand people's attitudes and perceptions of technology change, what we need to do very well is to be able to understand what industry is doing, how individuals feel. And we need to do that, we need to be able to come to conferences like IoT Asia where we understand what's on the minds of policy makers, private sector leaders, and lastly of course, just getting a sense of how people are responding to our surveys and our, our data and our analysis. So being here allows us to get that sort of feedback very quickly and we're able to discuss the issues with a wide spectrum of public sector and private sector leaders. Maybe more interesting examples of companies, big or small, doing things in an interesting way uh, that may be a little bit out of the mainstream, but could be potentially powerful and exciting in the long term.